What's good, y'all? It's Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out the biggest wrestling degenerate, man. This should be an interesting one. Uh, I'm not sure um, who it's specifically about, but we're about to find out. Um, yeah, there are some degenerates in the wrestling community, man. A lot of them, actually. And not even just in the wrestling community, just in the world in general. So we're gonna check this out, see what's going on here. Um, this is by Top 10 Wrestling. Make sure you go subscribe to them. I'm already subscribed to them. They uh, drop some definitely uh, creative and well informative re uh, wrestling related content. So make sure you go subscribe to them. Link to the original video will be down below. Let's get right into this one, man. Recently, I posted a video titled The Deathmatch Wrestling Degenerates. And I got a lot of comments asking why I didn't include a man named Ian Rotten. Now, I had no idea who Ian Rotten was. But upon research... I might have just found one of the biggest wrestling degenerates out there Damn. and he needs his own video. Okay. So today I'm going to tell you all about Ian Rotten, a former wrestler and founder of IWA Mid-South. Before we get into it though, be sure to like and subscribe Scammer, if you do user, enjoy the video. I'll scumbag. give you until the count of three to good. do that. That is not good at all. And man. let's get into the video. Can't be out here scamming. Ian Rotten debuted in 1990 and for the first couple years in his career would wrestle mainly around the Maryland and Texas territories, going by the name Johnny Lawler, storyline son of Jerry the King Lawler. He debuted for ECW in 1993 and his name was changed to what we know it as today of Ian Rotten. He was paired with Axel Rotten and they would go under the tag team name of the New Breed. Sorry, I'm literally recording it now and I've just realized it's the bad breed. The oh. new breed was like Elijah Burke's stable in WWE CW. He wrestled in ECW until 1995, mainly used as a tag wrestler, but towards the end of his ECW career was wrestling a few singles death matches and also began to make appearances for IWA Japan, foreshadowing. He wrestled for more indies and for BJW in Japan before 1996. And after being fired from ECW, Ian Rotten moved to Kentucky Damn, and in the year of 1996, he would found IWA Mid-South. A hardcore car crash indie promotion that mainly used old ECW guys and would run various deathmatch events and matches. They ran around the Kentucky area until the year 2000 when IWA Mid-South moved to Indiana. And the next decade for I I'm laughing because, man, I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I get it. It has its, its niche. It's like the wrestling community also has niche communities within the community, which is crazy. Um... As I've gotten older, it's like, I don't know. Maybe I've gotten softer in that sense. I don't know, man. It's just something about seeing somebody, <laughs> you know, <laughs> purposely mutilate themselves for our entertainment. It's quite shocking. But after a while, you can get desensitized to it. It's always crazy when you see something you don't see it often. And it has more of a lasting effect. So it just, it's funny that this has always been a thing. You know, it's always been part of that subgenre of wrestling it's just crazy that you know <laughs> that it, it is a thing like people love the car the death matches they love that the car crashes pretty much in a sense IWA Mid-South, just some absolute craziness would go down. The year 2000 saw Dave Prezak make numerous appearances as a manager for IWA Mid-South, and he was instrumental in bringing in top indie talent for the company. Mm. Chris Hero, CM Punk, and his best friend Colt Cabana, just to name a few. Okay. It would be this year that Chris Hero and CM Punk had a 92-minute match, which is regarded as one of the greatest indie wrestling matches ever. And yeah, for the next decade, IWA Mid-South just did stuff like That's this. That's crazy. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Yep. It's the... It's the music, bro. The music doesn't match the violence. I love it. <laughs> oh, my... What? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh my, oh my, oh my 
God. you know, pretty pretty tame stuff. <laughs> IWA Mid South had really established themselves as a top indie promotion with a cult following. They were running regular events and getting good talent. But as you can guess, things are soon gonna go tits up. And in mm-hmm. two thousand and eight, IWA Mid South would become subject to a police investigation. Uh oh. This is not good. Not when you get into At IWA Mid South Queen of the Death Matches two thousand and eight. A match was set to take place between Mickey Knuckles and Mike Levi. And throughout the course of this match, this match was just so uncomfortable because Mickey was just delivering some stiff punches and weapon shots to Levi throughout the entire match. Even shoot headbutting him to the point of there being a lump in her head. She won the match and then afterwards, this happened. So that was the whole match, but... Now, get ready because this is the worst beatdown I've ever seen in wrestling history. It is very violent, so I'm giving you a warning. Tank and Devin Moore come out and decide they want to take some liberties on Mike for how he wasn't selling in the match. Whoa. Oh! As if that wasn't enough, Ian comes out and starts hitting him with a fucking crutch. Oh! Whoa! Whoa! Even the owner's 12-year-old son came out and started beating Mike with a stick. So what you just saw there was Ian Rotten, wrestlers Devin Moore and Tank, as well as Ian Rotten's preteen son, who was now a wrestler known as JC Rotten, run out and shoot attack Mike Levi. Levi at the time was still a rookie by the way. This incident prompted the Indiana police to investigate and of course, major backlash. Ian Rotten claims that he told Levi up front that he was going to get a heavy beating and take an ass whooping. Maybe not leaving him in a puddle of blood was what Levi expected, but nonetheless, no charges were filed. However, wow. the next year, IWA Mid South would announce that they would be seizing operations following their Kings of the Crimson Mask show in August of 2000. Yeah, bro. Uh, maybe there was something talked about, hey, we're going to do this or whatever, but holding someone head against some ladders while someone steps on it is wild hitting someone as hard as you can with crutches is wild having a son hit them with a weapon as well a kendo stick whatever is wild i'm just very uncomfortable to watch i ain't gonna lie to you bro 2009 and following the show that's what would happen it was the farewell show for iwa mid-south until November of that year, when it was announced that IWA Mid-South wasn't closing down and would return with smaller budget shows. So basically, this is something that Ian Rotten did a lot. He would announce that a show would be the company's last so that it would sell out quick. And then he'd have the money to run more shows and pretty much just had zero intention of that show actually being the last the entire time. Yeah, something he did frequently and you're about to hear more about it. A year and a half later after its return in March 2011, it was announced again that IWA Mid-South would be closing down. But yep, you guessed it, IWA Mid-South returned three months later. But this time, they had returned under new ownership. Ian Rotten was no longer promoting, which is seemingly a step in the right direction for IWA Mid-South. A good move for them. But guess what? IWA announced that they were closing down again. And then in July of 2013, Ian Rotten announced that IWA Mid-South was back and that he was also back as the promoter of it all again. What was actually the point? And in case you're wondering, IWA have not changed. Going into the 2020s, they were heavily criticized for running wrestling shows in the height of the pandemic with fans in attendance and no social distancing. At the time, when not even AEW and WWE were at the point of having fans in attendance Mm -hmm. yet. Their world champion, Jake Crist, posted to Twitter just last year demanding that Ian Rotten pay him in a statement and also posted a video of him burning his IWA belts that he currently holds. IWA's response to this, they canceled all their upcoming events leaving them on a hiatus yet again Damn. will they come back knowing their history yeah probably but that's more or less the story of iwa mid-south hopefully so far 
But as for Ian Rotten, there's still more to discuss with this guy, because once again, this guy is just a degenerate. So without further ado, here's a list of more things that Ian Rotten did. He shot on other wrestlers. Yes, Mike Levi wasn't the only one. He did it to Peter Be Beautiful in 2001 in a match against him, and did the same to Die Hard Stephen Lee. He allegedly has hepatitis C, which is very worrying as he blades in pretty much every match he does and bleeds profusely all over his opponents. Whoa. Oh yeah, and speaking of shoots, remember, remember that Mickey Knuckles girl from before who was part of the Mike Levi match? Well, she broke her leg on an IWA Mid-South show in a very gruesome moment. It's probably one of IWA Mid-South's most watched and most well-known moments. And it's oh. also a moment that Rotten supposedly promised Knuckles he wouldn't release. And as you just heard me say, yeah. it's probably one of the most well-known IWA Mid-South clips of all time. So, you know how that went. Generally, Rotten is just a carny, falsely advertising his shows, shooting on rookies, using untrained wrestlers, not paying wrestlers, booking himself yeah. to go over people and beat people up. He's just an overall scumbag. He got wrestlers banned from various venues. And finally, perhaps the worst of it all, is that Ian Rotten often worked with JC Bailey, who was a deathmatch wrestler who tragically passed away in 2010 due to a brain aneurysm caused by his concussion history. Oh, he had his problems no. with drugs, and allegedly, Ian Rotten was no help to this, and used to pay him in drugs to be on his shows. No. It's just pure scumbaggery, isn't it? While IWA Mid-South is probably going to come back, he's hoping Ian Rotten does not come back with them. Yeah, nah, that's kind of messed up, bro, if the if the rumors are true. Um, it's, it's one of those things where it's like some people shouldn't be involved in the wrestling community, especially when it comes to promoting, setting up things, trying to, you know, you know, sell, you know, tickets and just being a part of that all of that they shouldn't be a part of like some people try to take advantage and for you to go out there and legitimately shoot on someone a rookie and legitimately probably give them a concussion for whatever the reason is because you just feel like you have the power to and they're they're young they don't know anything or they're new to the wrestling biz that's not cool it's not cool i'm sure it happens in other uh wrestling companies and well not just this one but yeah nah he's definitely from just from that just from that alone not really protecting your wrestlers you know people that you hire or whatnot not good at all man comment down below let me know man do y'all know any other wrestling degenerates um that you may want me to check out from once again i gotta give the shout out to the homie uh top 10 wrestling if there's any other videos or uh wrestling degenerates or uh, you know, people that you want me to check out that he's done like a little little docu series on them, or you know, talked about them. Let me know. I definitely will link it down below. Uh, once again, go follow the homie or subscribe to his channel. Top Ten Wrestling. Link to the original video will also be down below. But I appreciate all love and support. Road to 150k. And I am still your undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you in the next one. Peace.